Radhe Radhe everyone, welcome to our daily wisdom from Bhagavad Gita session. So please do turn on your cameras when you are reciting or you know giving your comments or whatever. Nitinji, over to you, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, thank you, Amitavani ji. Thank you, uh, Kaitri ji and Padmini ji for a beautiful session, like always. So good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, Radhe Radhe, a very uh, warm welcome to today's edition of uh, Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Today we will pick up uh, the next shloka. We will talk a little bit more about desire. Right? Sangam Tyaktva, I was hearing in the previous session, is what Lord Krishna is telling us. Attachment, we have to refrain from attachment. And that is our own doing only. Today we will get into desire and we will see what causes that, who can be held responsible for that and a little more facets around that. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and we will start by invoking the blessings of God and Guru. So let me share my screen and we will get started. Okay, so let me get in the presentation mode. All right, so let me do the prayers. You can do that at your place. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Vasudev Sutam Devam, Kamsachanuramardhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru All right. Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening. Once again to all of you. So let's get started. So this shloka, as you see, it's, uh, you know, there are four uh, lines in this, uh, like a little different from the ones that we have been doing and it is recited a little differently as well. So let me give it a shot and then you're welcome to follow along. Apuryamanam achala pratishtham Samudram apapravishanti atvat Tadvat kama yam pravishanti sarve Sashantim apnoti na kama kami. All right. Who do we have? Sandhya, go ahead. Go ahead, Sandhya. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Apuryamanam chala pratishtham. Samudrama paha pravishanti atvat. Tatvat kama yam pravishanti sarve. So shanti map noti na kama kami. Very nice, Sandhya. Good try. Radhe Radhe. All right. Ude Kumarji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe. Apuryamanam achala pratishtam. Samudram apaha pravishanti advat tadvat kama yam pravishanti sarve sashantim apnoti na kama kami radhe 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 very nice sudeji sumeshi please go ahead radhe radhe apuriya manam achala pratishtam Samudra mapa pravishanti adva tadatva kama yam pravishanti sarve sa santim apnoti na kama kami. Very nice. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. It has a different meter, but you all are doing good. Great. Please go ahead, Shamji. Radhe Radhe Shamji. Apuryamanam chalpatishtam 
समुद्र मविशंति यद्वत काम यम प्रविशंति सर्वे शांति मापनोति न काम कामी राधे राधे श्याम जी राधे राधे ओके लेट्स टेक द रिमेनिंग फोर हैंड्स यस राधे राधे दिनेश जी प्लीज गो है राधे दिनेश जी राधे राधे आ पूर्यमाणम अचल प्रतिष्ठम समुद्र माप प्रविशंति अद्व अचल प्रतिष्ठ समुद्र माप प्रविशंति यद्वत तद्वत काम प्रविशंति सर्वे सशांति मापनोति न काम कामी जय माता दी जय बचरंग बली थैंक यू अपना जी अपना जी राधे 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 आपूर्यमानम अचल प्रतिष्ठम समुद्र माप प्रविशंति यद्वत तद्वत कामायम प्रविशंति सर्वे सशांति मापनोति न काम कामी वेरी नाइस थैंक यू करना जी ओके लास्ट थ्री हैंड्स देन भद्र इज देयर एज वेल भद्र राइट द नेम भद्र भद्र काम राधे 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 अपूर्यमचल प्रतिष्ठ समुद्रमशाति काम यम प्रविशाति सर्वे शांति न काम कामी सॉरी थैंक यू राधे राधे थैंक यू लास्ट थ्री हैंड्स राधे राधे शांति अचल प्रतिष्ठ समुद्र माप प्रविशाति काम प्रविशाति शांति मापनोति न कामी कामी वेरी नाइस थैंक यू आई सी वन मोर हैंड यस सैराम जी प्लीज गो हेड राधे 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 अचल प्रतिष्ठ समुद्र माप प्रविशाति प्रविशांति सर्वे आपनोति न काम कामी वंडरफुल वेरी नाइस लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड 
Karjun just as the ocean remains undisturbed by the incessant flow of waters from rivers merging into it, likewise, the sage who is unmoved despite the flow of desirable objects all around him attains peace, and not the person who str strives to satisfy desires. Now, we'll get into that ocean merging into rivers aspect because it, it, it would require much more discussion. Today, we will talk about the desires and that aspect of it, you know. Why fall for it? And, be, and Lord Krishna is saying that one who can absorb all these desires, like an ocean is able to absorb all the rivulets and other streams of water flowing into it without getting disturbed, that ocean, ocean never overflows, no matter how many rivers empty themselves into it. Similarly, this person goes beyond desires. Now, you may say that... Um, you know, if we, if we don't succumb to our desires, we give up desires also, life will become so boring. It will be a very nearest life if you don't even go after your desires aspect of it. So we'll have a bit of a discussion on that as well. So um, let's get started and first look at um, some of the aspects. We'll get that going. So what we are going to do today is, are desires good or bad? We will get into this concept. Actually, it depends. And we will also see a beautiful lecture from Swamiji to, in today's uh, topic of discussion that we are going to have around desire. Very powerful lecture. So desire is good or bad? It depends actually. And we'll see why, how. Let's get started. So um, let's start with... Okay, a quick recap. Sansari Jeev and Enlightened Soul. Yesterday we looked at the difference between these two. And we also spoke or discussed this concept that who is a real renunciate here? Who's a real Tyagi? Who's sacrificing? Is it a worldly person? Or is it somebody who's on the path of spirituality and, and or enlightened? So the Tyagi... I think we came to that conclusion. Anybody disagrees? Who's a, who's a bigger Tyagi of the two? The worldly people or people who are actually following spirituality? I mean, Tyagi with, re, with regards to giving up the comforts, giving up the peace, joy, uh, stability of mind, all the good things that we look for in our self-help books. Who is a bigger Tyagi? I think we do. Is anybody, I mean, if somebody disagrees that worldly person is not a Tyagi, people who start following spirituality diligently are renunciates, then I would like to hear from them. Um, I'd love to have a quick discussion around that. But yeah, the Tyagis are people who are still hung up with the world. And despite the reversals or the slaps of Maya, they keep on seeking that without any plan B. Okay. And it, our experience itself will tell us you don't need to go by the Shastra Vakyas on this one. Your experience, life experience would tell you that. Yes, Samji? You beg to disagree? Agree to disagree? No, <laughs> no, so sorry. No, no, I agree with that one. But there is a um, catch-22 I'm talking about. Enlightened soul is already Yagi because he already renunciated the whole thing. So sorry, if the Sasari so is keeping in the same samsara, same whatever negativity is there. So if he's not enunciating, he's not leaving anything out of that, then how can you count him as a bigger enunciate? Unless he's on the path of this one, he's on the sadhak. If he's not a siddha, he's still a sadhak, he's an aspirant, he's just in the yeah, process of moving. Not a tyagi as yet. I mean, he's still work in progress, right? But the sacrifice... He's actually not making a sacrifice. That person is actually embracing something that is satisfying. Right? The worldly persons are rejecting that. It's like picking up between an old shoe or a torn shoe. The worldly people, they continue to wear the torn shoe because they're so hung up with it. They're so captivated by it. And, and they think this, this is the only shoe they should be wearing. Uh, because uh, they don't have any plan B or they are not exposed to the pleasure of wearing a new shoe. I agree, but if he's on the process of like, he knows that he's wearing the bought on shoe, but mm -hmm. he at the same time, he's aware of that, that one day I'm going to get, I'm on looking for the new shoe also. So he's in the process of doing it. Process. It's 
process of then that. then he may be a better tyagi as better tyagi. not a complete tyagi better tyagi i would say yeah no. the day you become enlightened then of course you have embraced joy peace all the good things that humans are looking for right every endeavor that we make is to feel good feel the joy feel the peace but the problem is despite our best intentions best efforts we go further and further and further away from peace it's more anxiety more stress more um, more of uh, discontentment that breeds as opposed to getting closer to that perfect joy peace that we are looking for so it's it's yeah it's a work in progress tyagi but a better tyagi i would say thank you people who are on the spiritual path at least they are aligning to something which is taking them closer to what everybody is looking for people who are still hung up in material world who are not yet convinced that the direction of god is the direction see the direct direction of god means that the our consciousness is bereft of god right god is everywhere so building that part that i need to align to the spiritual principle i need to um, uh, you know believe put my belief in the words of god i need to practice uh, spirituality i need to remember god when you start aligning to these principles your life experience would tell you you are on the right path right because what you will experience you would have never experienced before in your material regular material life yes sumeshi so this was a quick recap yes sumeshi you had a question no i had a suggestion that uh, sansari jeev is a uh, very renunciate because they renounce the path yeah. of light and accept the path of darkness rather mm-hmm. than true very true exactly they are bigger renunciates they have given up all the things that we are looking for actually right not knowing the in ignorance of course now let's start with the story here okay light story once upon a time i don't know why all the stories start once upon a time but this is also once upon a time so once upon a time there was a dog named rover and the story is over yes sir not like that okay so there was a guy who was limping okay he was limping and when he was asked why you're limping he had only one shoe and it was uncomfortable to walk on with one shoe right when you are wearing one shoe especially if it's a little bit high heel it is a little uncomfortable to walk with so that is what he was having and then when he was further probed did you lose the other shoe you know what does this guy say he said actually i i found this shoe new shoe without its partner shoe and he wore it and took upon that discomfort that comes along with it what would you recommend this guy right he is taking upon that disease or discomfort around it any recommendations for this guy go ahead sandeep yeah i remove this shoe and walk barefoot but how, how yeah why would how could i remove it i found it right it's something new shiny right. thing yeah remove it very true just give up give up that shoe the comfort would come right automatically very true yes uh, let's hear from a couple of other hands okay by the way i have another joke for you so those of you who don't get a chance we'll go to the next screen before we get into yes uh, rahul either remove the shoe or probably find a similar shoe of his size so that he can wear it comfortably but until he finds a similar shoe what, what should he do basically is he obliged to continue to walk like that with that no, shoe that that is his choice he can easily remove that yeah true very true yes manishi and relishi manishi please go ahead yeah radhe radhe yes yeah, swami ji actually had this video and guy on the bus found the shoe and he was wearing it so he's like uh he brought on a problem onto himself instead of just like sandhya ji said we just need to get rid of that shoe and not you know because he brought on the problem of uh limping on himself because by accepting a one one shoe instead of just being barefoot true very true it's a self invited problem basically yeah. nobody's forcing upon that problem it's self invited and still it's not able to willing to let go of it 
Okay, maybe one more hand and I will move forward. Um, please hold off because I have another slide. Uh, go ahead, Nilesh. Please go ahead. Yeah, so I was thinking the same thing, like remove the shoe and then you become comfortable. Right, but that uh, allurement of having that something, right, that you have found is so much that it's not willing to let go of that shoe, even though it is causing discomfort going forward. It's something similar to the sensual pleasures we go after as well okay, in this world. Now you say you let go of it and you'll feel better. They're not willing to let go of it. And that is where the trick trick is. God says you let go of these low-level, tiny, temporary, imperfect, sensual pleasures. And God is not conjuice makhi choose that he will say, okay, now you lead a boring life. What he'll give you in return or what he basically blesses you with is much, much better, higher, tasteful than what you normally get from these low, uh, the pleasures driven by our lower, lower nature. Okay. That is what his promise is. But we need to be willing to let go of it. Right. Although we have found something shiny that we think is good for us, but actually truly not. It is actually discomforting. All we need to do is get rid of it. It's a very simple analogy, difficult to practice, of course, but um, it's, an, it's an interesting example he gives as well. Yes, Nitaji, you wanted to say something? Yeah, yes, Radhe Radhe, just uh, wanted to add, uh, before wearing it, uh, don't even choose to wear it, that's it. So problem yeah. solved in the root itself. Very true. I mean, if they were, they had been attending JK Yoga online classes, you know, they will simply, the moment they see one shoe, they'll reject it immediately. But true, if you don't do it, prevention is better than cure, right? You can actually prevent that. Yes, Jyoti ji, you wanted to add? Jyoti ji? Um, just uh, rather, rather, um, okay. what was what was profound about this uh, um, screen is the fact that in the old days, if somebody wanted to trouble someone, they would give them an elephant. And uh, because taking care of an elephant is more of a headache uh, and it takes a whole lot more resources. And uh, that concept still goes on to this day where for Christmas, people buy each other what is called a white elephant, which is a, a white elephant gift, which might be the most useless gift, but it just gives them more of a headache, but they don't want to give it up. They'll keep it as a... a status symbol more than anything else true, true. Rade, rade. maintenance of and um, maintaining that mm -hmm. gift is much more head you know cumber cumbersome or expensive than the value of the gift itself the white elephant yeah, very true. it reminds me of a story you know when i was in school we went to play table tennis you know, for our zonals and regionals so there used to be our sports teacher he was very temperamental okay so he would he would scold people beat them up and you know it's pretty normal there and uh, trouble a lot of people basically a lot of lot of people were very upset with him and then we were traveling to hyderabad on the way to the train and you know what happened he this guy had brought some new sh sports shoes the sports teacher so one of the guy who was very upset with him what he did was he had kept his shoes and he was sleeping i think during daytime or maybe something he took his shoe and threw it off the train and people asked him, you know, why did you do that? He said, I was very upset. He said, if that is the case, you should have done both of these shoes. You just threw one of them. He said, I wanted him to remember about his new shoes by looking at this one always. He just threw one of them. Anyway, that was a funny, humorous incident, I remember. But that was kind of an interesting way of looking at it. But let's move on. Now, there's another guy here. Now, he looks at, he wakes up and he looks at a banana peel. And, you know, what does he think? He thinks, gosh, I, ha I need to fall again today. Okay. This is the first impulse that comes to his mind. Of course, it's a joke. Now, let me ask you a question. If he looks at two banana peels, what does he think? Anybody? Yes, Shamji? I'll fall twice again. Just what? kidding. I'll fall again, again, and again. Yes, Sandhya? Yeah, I mean, I think I'll fall for the next two days. I mean, something around No, that. no, same day. He says, gosh, I need to fall twice today. Okay, but not very tricky. If he sees three, what does he think? Rice? No. 
he thinks that he's very creative he thinks that you know i wish i had three legs <laughs> and then if he sees four what does he think so you will do say uh, instead of falling four times i should have five, four legs five legs six legs that way no, no, no. he's very smart he's thinking that i wish i had my <laughs> wife for company as well okay <laughs> so so the point here is that um, when we see things around it's not obligatory on us to go with that and our senses are like that only it almost feels compulsive for us to go for it that is how the vishya of our senses the object of our senses exert control over it it seems like a foolish person right but sham ji as i say right very nicely um, with a lot of respect and politeness i explain that this is the story of our life only so our senses are like this only right they make us fall and we feel obliged to do that it's almost like you you are walking out in a mall you see things and you say you know i have to buy this now so you're not obliged to actually you you can make a decision you can side step it you can throw it off and things like that but more often than not when our senses come in contact with the sense objects it feels some kind of a obligation that i have to ride this i have to do that okay and that is where the repeated contemplation because we have done so much repeated contemplation on these objects that it it makes us its prey or victim that lord krishna says sangam tyaktwa that means you have developed attachment to that and that's where you feel obliged to do that that i have to do it right people say that i will not put sweets in my refrigerator or at my place because if i see them i am i am you know i am compelled to eat that that much power they exert over us right and lord krishna says that see bhagavad gita everything every word that lord krishna is saying we have to believe it's like conversing with lord krishna himself okay like in i was talking about um, so there was a story i have i was sharing one of swami ji's lectures he was talking about uh, there's a shloka a beautiful shloka 9.22 which says ananya chinta yanto mam yojana paryupasate tesham nitya abhyukta nam yoga kshema vyamyaham so he's written that yoga kshem vyamyaham is that lic um, you know that uh, statement lic hands that is called yoga kshem vyamyaham if you go to india people who have done lic yoga kshem vyamyaham is their punch line that basically means i provide for what they lack you know what they need on the spiritual path and then i preserve what they already have okay so he said that yoga kshemyam vyamyaham i preserve it for them and there was a pandit gita pandit jagannath mishra he said no this is this cannot be right because lord krishna has so many planetary expansions and devi devatas and so many why would he has to take care of it himself like vishnu he could administer somebody to do that so he said no it's not vyamyaham it's it's a dadamyaham so he actually cut it in his commentary when he was writing on his note pack and put it as dadamyaham that he doesn't have to take the pain to do that so then lord because it is a con when you are reading bhagavad gita and if you are not actually putting faith it god actually takes personally that part okay so we have to put complete faith in bhagavad gita so then he came to his house and he was i think taking bath or something like that and he met his wife lord small but you know krishna came and he had put in a lot of weight on his head uh, you know 20 30 kgs or pounds and then he comes his wife says uh, what's going on here he said this is your husband's weight you know i'm carrying and then he had a scratch on his face as well what happened he said he only did that to me so wife was very upset and then when his husband came came out he had the boy had left he said what kind of a person are you right i mean this is uh, this is not expected of you or little boy you are first of all burdened him and secondly put a scratch and then jagannath mishra realized he was first of all yog he was actually preserving all his stuff he had krishna showed him a drishtant that this is what it is and then when he put a scratch he actually said you know you put a scratch scratch there you played with my word you know you put a question mark on my word so lord krishna actually gave him darshan in that sense so point here being when you reading bhagavad gita it is actually a conversation with krishna each and every word that has come out of his mouth carries a lot of weight right and he said in bhagavad gita that all these uh, uh, like there's a shloka right um, he says that dhyayato vishyan punsam uh, sangaste uh, basically shupa jayate 
Sangaste Sanjayate Kama Kama Krodo Bhijayate. So basically, it's our repeated contemplation on things that leads to attachment and that leads to desire basically. And desire leads to anger and greed. So simply, he's explained that entire um, you know, cycle of how it unfolds. So now, now let's look at this. These are the things that we fall for every day. And we it is we have brought it upon ourselves just by virtue of repeated contemplation of happiness in this world. To, to an extent that we feel obligated to ride our senses every time an object of sense presents itself in front of us. Just like this foolish guy who's thinking I have to fall again. Now let's get uh, here one of the beautiful lectures from Swamiji before we move any further. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 1.25 so that we can cover it quickly before we proceed further. So just give me a sec. People go to God to get their material desires fulfilled. Somebody said we think God is a cosmic bellboy. We press the bell. The waiter comes, yes, what do you want, sir? So we think God is also a cosmic bellboy who will fulfill our desires. But the point is, if we go to God with material desires, then it will not be considered devotion to God. Just like, let us say, your son is unwell. And you go to the doctor, you inform the doctor, the doctor checks out the son, he writes down a prescription, and then you go to the chemist, he fulfills your prescription and gives it to you, you return with the medicine. Now, were you engaging in devotion to the doctor? No, you were dealing with the doctor, but the mind was attached to the son. It was devotion to the son, care of the doctor. Similarly, if we go to God, Oh, my Lord, my son is not well, please make him all right. My daughter doesn't get married, please get her married. <clears throat> if we go with these worldly desires to God, it will be the same thing. It is not devotion to God. It is devotion to the son and daughter, care of God. He is only the means of getting this done. So if he doesn't do it, go to somebody else. If Sri Krishna doesn't listen, then go to Lord Shiv. If he doesn't listen, then go to Shani Dev. If he doesn't listen, then go and do some uh, makbara. Lahyo ankh kina andharo jagvaharai cha jaya. You know, in India, there are many such dargas. Some mullah died many years ago, many centuries ago. So his dargah is there. Now, hundreds of thousands of Muslims and Hindus go there every year. Oh, I don't have an arm, I should get an arm, I don't have a leg, I should get a leg. One of such makbara is in Uttar Pradesh, a place called Vaharaich. The people go. The Tulsi Das says, what are you going there for? Lahyo ankh kin andharo jag vaharaich jai. You are going there for fulfilling your material desires. When the mullah was alive, he never gave anything to anybody. Now even his bones are not there. What are you going to get? But we people don't listen. You know, in India, all you need to do is to tie a red ribbon on a tree. And you see the magic that will happen. <laughs> Once, one Gurudev had a donkey. So he told his disciple, I am going for two months, you take care of my donkey. Gurudev left. The disciple with all his devotion would bathe the donkey. And he would massage the donkey and give it an oil bath. Now the donkey was not habituated to such kind of treatment. So he overexpressed his devotion to Gurudev's donkey to the extent that the donkey died. <laughs> the disciple felt too bad that, you know, his Gurudev had entrusted the donkey to him and the donkey has gone to the celestial abode or wherever. He buried the donkey and made a samadhi. <clears throat> and then he put his head on the samadhi and was mourning, look, what did I do? I did not take care of Gurudev's gatha. Somebody saw this guy with his head there. He thought he is worshipping. This must be some manifestation of the divinity. So he came and offered a few flowers. <laughs> Seeing the flowers, another guy came and offered flowers. Seeing little more flowers, somebody came and offered Dakshana. <laughs> now a stream of people started coming, making offerings. And he became busy collecting the Dakshanas. <laughs> like, you know, when you go over a hill on the highways in India, at the start of the Ghat is a Devi temple. And the truck drivers, etc., before, as they cross the Devi temple, they'll take a coin and chuck it. Only thing is, not, not even considerate of the pujari. If you are there, you better have a helmet on. <laughs> but anything to get you across. So now people were offering Dakshana and he was gathering them. It became a full-time business for him. <laughs> Gurudev returned. Gurudev said, Beta, what are you doing? Now he remembered what had happened. He said, oh, Gurudev, I'm so sorry. You know that donkey you had entrusted in my care, he has passed away. 
Gurudev said, really? But Gurudev, he was, he's a very chamatkari donkey. He's fulfilling people's desires. <laughs> They're coming with material desires and he's fulfilling them. Gurudev said, look, it doesn't work like this. Ten people come. I want a child. Now two out of the ten get the child. They go and do propaganda amongst 100. So 100 people line up to come. I want a child. Now out of the 120 have a child by the same chance of probability. They go and do propaganda amidst 1000. And that is how this line gets created. So these material desires we take. All the bhakti that is visible in the world. People are going to temples, to churches, to masjids, to gurdwaras, to synagogues. For what? For the fulfillment of those material desires. So Narad says, this is not the devotion that I am talking about. I am talking about such devotion that is free of kamana. And these material things that we ask, whom are we asking from? From he who has the treasure chest of divine goods. And what are we asking from him? These little trinkets. This is like you go to Kuber, the god of wealth, and say, Kuberji, can you please give me a $5 bill? Kuber will laugh. You have come to me and you're asking for five dollars? One beggar once purchased a lottery. So the correspondents asked him, in case you win the lottery and you get a hundred thousand dollars, what will you do? He said, then I'll purchase a Mercedes and I'll beg in my Mercedes. <laughs> the intellect is at that level. It doesn't go beyond. The material desires, we value importance to these material things. But if we want God, we have to go beyond. There was an Arabian sheikh. He had 35 wives. Now when he went to London for the first time and he saw all the goods there, he wrote back to them, what is it that you want? One said, I want a mink suit. And the second said, I want this particular perfume. And the third said that I want these high heeled sandals and so on and so on. The youngest queen, she wrote the numeral one on the sheet and sent it. So the sheikh got all the goods that the wives had wanted. And he, when he reached, he sent it to all of them. But he went to that little uh, queen himself with a slip and said, what is this one you had written? I could not figure it out. She said, I only wanted you and I have got you. So that is how the realm of God works. Do you want all these things or do you want him? So if you wish to attain him, you have to give up all these desires. Our scriptures are so emphatic on this point. They say the thing that is the biggest enemy is not your neighbor, your relative or that boss who's always scolding you. It is the desire that is within you. The day you can overcome it, you will become like God. Vimunchati yada kaman sarvan manavo manasisthitan tarhyeva pundarikaksha bhagavatvaya kalpate. The Bhagavatam says, Vimunchati yada kaman. If you can give up desires, what will happen? You will become Bhagavatvaya. You will become like God. Now we make the desires thinking they will give us happiness. And the consequence is the reverse. It's like the bee that got attracted by the honey and sat down on it without realizing it had got trapped and it could not fly from there. And Ramakrishna Paramahans compares it to the moody. You know, they have these go-downs where the grain that is harvested is stored. And on the entrance, because rats start infesting it to keep the rats out, a little puffed rice is kept in a mouse trap. And these rats and mice come, oh, muri, the puffed rice. They enter the mouse trap to die there without realizing if they had just forsaken that little desire, the whole go down of grain was open to them. Similarly, if we can just forsake these desires, we will get that bhakti which will make us tap the mat and atmaram. And that is the purification of the intellect. So Narad says, look, in your devotion, don't desire material things. Second, don't even seek liberation. Liberation is also a material desire. The jnani says it's a spiritual desire. What is the ultimate goal? Mukti. You know, in our various darshans, Nyay darshan, Vaisheshik darshan, Sankhya darshan, Yog darshan, the ultimate goal is Mukti. Sankhya darshan states it, Yog darshan states it. But the Vaishnava Acharyas say, no, Mukti is a material desire. One devotee says, oh God, I am suffering from poverty. This suffering is tormenting me. Please, free me from this. Give me wealth. So he's asking for wealth. Oh God, give me wealth. The other devotee says, oh God, I'm suffering from maya, the material bondage. So please liberate me and free me from material bondage. 
He is asking for one material thing. He is asking for all these material things. Freedom from material bondage. So the path of bhakti is for those who are brave. Who are not running away from material misery. Who are saying, forget it. I want to serve and give to God. That is why Kabir Ji says, Prem na baadi upajay, prem na heart bikai. The divine love doesn't grow in the fields. It cannot be purchased in the market. Raja praja je ruche, shish dam dei le ai. Whoever wants it, give your head as an offering. Shish dam dei le ai. If you wish to receive divine love, give your head to God. What is the meaning of give your head? Give your head means give up your desires. That was the message that was taught to Hazrat Ibrahim by Allah. The story is there in the Christian Old Testament of the Bible. It is there in the Torah and it is highly emphasized in the Islamic tradition. The Eid ul Juha is celebrated to commemorate this event. There was Hazrat Ibrahim. So Islam Dharm accepts they have been paygambers before Muhammad. But they say that after Muhammad there was no paygambar. He was the last. So there was a paygambar called Ibrahim. The Jews refer to him as Abraham. Now Ibrahim had a son called Ishmael. So Allah had to test him out. Said, look, I need you to give the sacrifice of Ishmael. So take him and your wife and leave them in the desert. So Ibrahim said, if Allah wants it, so be it. He took his wife and his child and left them in the desert. The child was only five years old. Subsequently, when the child became 15, Allah again spoke to Ibrahim. He said, your son has grown up. He is resigned. Residing in such and such place because Allah had done the yoga shame, He had maintained him. He is residing in this place. You go and bring him, and I need to you to offer his head in sacrifice. So Ibrahim went. He met his son. He was happy to be reunited, <coughs> and he said to Ishmael that, "Look, this is the message I have received from Allah." Ishmael was a very elevated soul. He said, "If that is the faryad of Allah, I will definitely, my dear father, you must fulfill it." So the whole arrangement was made of the guillotine. And now he cannot cut off his head with his eyes open. So his son Ishmael was placed there, his head, and Ibrahim closed his eyes with the band. And he took the sword in his hand to chop off his son's head. He lifted the sword and when he brought it down, he found that Allah had taken away the child from there and placed a goat. So the goat's head got cut. Allah said, I was only testing you that can you do sarva samarpan? Can you give up, sacrifice everything for my sake? So just to commemorate that, the Eid, Eid ul Juha. You know, there is one Eid ul Fitr, two main Eids, and the other is the Bakra Eid. So Bakra Eid is Eid ul Juha. Now people forget the essence of why this event was done. All they do is they cut a goat. Now that becomes a parody of the actual thing. Because Allah did not want you to cut a goat. He wanted to cut off all your desires. Khoop tarsaya hai teri khwaisho ne hi tujhe. Khoop tarsaya hai teri khwaisho ne hi tujhe. Ab tu bhi in khwaisho ko kuch tarasti hi chhod de. These desires have made you so anxious for so long. Now release them. Let them keep on yearning and you'll be free of them. So the scriptures tell us, Yo na kama yate kin chit brahma bhu yaya kalpate. Those who give up desiring will become like God. But when we say give up desiring, what does it mean? We should not even desire God. No, it means all desires apart from the desire of His happiness. In other words, all selfish desires. That also includes spiritual selfish desires. You see, if you want divine love, then you have to give up spiritually selfish desires as well. Just like the gopis, they loved Sri Krishna. And Kubja also loved Sri Krishna. The gopis and Kubja both had Madhurya Bhav. They looked at Sri Krishna as their beloved. So what was the difference? Kubja loved Sri Krishna for her own happiness. I will get my happiness from Sri. I don't want anybody else. Only Sri Krishna. I only want to see Sri Krishna. I only want to be with Sri Krishna. Why? For my happiness. And that was called Sadharani Rati. She is a devotee. She cannot be criticized, but she will not get that pure love. And what is the nature of that, that pure love? Narajji will reveal it later on. Tata sukha sukhitvam.
स्वसुख वासना गंधलेश शून्य श्री कृष्ण सुखाईक तात्पर्यमयी भक्ति such devotion where there is no tinge of self happiness the only desire is for shri krishna's happiness now that is a very elevated state that state even big yogis and munis cannot reach without lifetimes of sadhana so we should not become despondent how will i become so selfless remember the law of incremental growth one one step at a time you keep the perfect goal before you i wish to reach the highest state of god realization doesn't matter if it takes 10 lifetimes to reach there but we'll not compromise the goal so keep the highest goal of selfless love and keep taking one step that is why the importance of seva if we only do sadhana what happens we are not able to transform that inner nature i want his happiness the yearning for self happiness remains strong but when you do seva then that miracle takes place slowly slowly you start thinking his happiness the happiness of my beloved and that should remain constant all the time tat sukha sukhitvam so that will be the gopi prem so narad ji has said now he is now describing this bhakti sana kamai mana in this bhakti you should not desire because it is nirodh rupi this bhakti is restrictive then in the next uh, sutra he will explain further this nirodh and he will give another dimension to it we will go into that in the next lecture all right hope you enjoyed this powerful nugget from swami ji one on the desire i love that uh, share right that khoob tarsaya hai teri khwahish ho nahi tujhe ab tu bhi kuch khwahishon ko tarasta hi chhod de so we have to not give every khwahish a closure you have to keep certain one open ended only and then the magic will happen and also you spoke about the concept between seva and sadhana right both can give you madhurya prem or prem or basically divya prem but still there is a difference because if we do it for our sake we will build the sanskars of kubja but if we do it selflessly then gopi prem that is the highest level so anyways they are very deep profound topics but swami ji covered this aspect of desire so beautifully that desires good or bad it really depends on how you are channelizing those any desire for the pleasure of god becomes a good desire uplifting desire purifying desire anything for your own sake does not right and then if you think if you map it back to the concept of karam yog there also you are desiring basically doing it for the pleasure of god only so it is a stepping stone or a uh, you know a simulation to actually get to the state all right so now let's uh, before i move on i just wanted to let you know about something very important so this saturday see it's like um, swami ji's birthday is coming up on 19th and we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to give him a very unique gift and what is that gift uh, you know it's like a birthday gift to a living legend i would say a living bhakti saint and that is the opportunity we have now to get to know more we are going to have that session at uh, i think 10 o'clock saturday so do plan to join it and it's going to be at 9:30 pm uh, ist you can block your calendars for that and uh, put it down in the tracker if you are interested to join um, uh, but we'd like to keep account of that but uh, it's going to be a fascinating session uh, and and a unique opportunity for us to gift something back to swami ji for all the blessings that we have received from him forms of this divine knowledge which is priceless so please block your calendar around that i'll remind you again tomorrow on this and i personally look forward to meeting you all in that session and if you can inspire more people to come even better okay so uh, uh, more to come during that session so i really look forward to uh, catching up with you in that session and please do sign up and inspire your friends and family to come as well okay it's a great great opportunity to do something special for swami ji uh, we have a unique unique opportunity there All right. So now, getting back to Samji, you had a question. Please go ahead, Samji. Yeah. So incremental steps. We will talk about some of the fundamental building blocks of that spiritual quotient, SQ, so to say. I'll talk about that a little because it will give us a framework of how to go about it. Right? Just some kind of a, a, a high-level framework around it. Yes, Samji, you had a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita that. what you don't have i'll give it to you so that's the exact statement spiritual right? it is spiritual we cannot assume that as material yes. right because krishna yeah. will not give us poison and material 
happiness that we are seeking is poison. So when he says, I will go to provide you what you don't have, does not mean first I will make you happy materially. Then I will start giving you spirit. It means I will provide you what you truly need. And he is our well-wisher. He is not our wish fulfiller alone. He is our well-wisher. That is the key thing. So when he says he is going to provide for what you don't have, it's uh, it means what is basically beneficial for your spiritual journey. Yeah. In what way does he give? Suppose if we are not humble and pride, will he give circumstances that cuts our pride or will he give the wisdom that humbleness naturally? Yeah, he gives you, like we said, right? That prayer we had looked at, I asked for strength and he gave me obstacles to climb. I asked for wisdom and he gave me problems to solve. I asked for uh, what do you call that? I, you know, when, when we are not humble, he'll give us opportunities to practice humility or things that will challenge your ego multiple times. So he will give you lessons. He is not going to transplant that thing, um, mm -hmm. you know, like a free fund. Otherwise, saints will say we, so he will give you an opportunity to work on yourself rather than transplanting it uh, inside you. That will also happen when you start surrendering. Say, if you start progressing in bhakti, start taking his assistance, increase your surrender, then the knowledge will start getting transplanted as well, which becomes wisdom right from the word go. But then we have to meet the eligibility criteria for that. But typically, he will give you situations so that you can learn your lessons. He's a perfect teacher. Teacher, how do they teach teachers? They don't give the, you know, on a platter. They, they ask inquisitive questions or give problems you know, to the students so that they can learn it themselves. They can do the hands-on and learn it so that lesson becomes pakka in their head. And Krishna teaches us the same way. There is one more hand raised. Should we take it quickly? Sure. Go ahead, Jagratji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Jagratji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. I just joined, um, um, but I... I don't exactly know what was the context, but I heard that the question, last question, at least that reminded me of something. In one of the Swamiji's lectures, he was talking about Kunti and he was saying that Kunti is very unique because when God asked what you want, she said, yeah. give me, I think she said, give me trouble. Uh, she asked opposite of generally what people ask. And he was trying, he, Swamiji was explaining that the reason is because that she wanted that to help. Kunti wanted help to draw away from the material world and that somehow will help, even though it looks very counterintuitive. So that was very high form of devotion. Yeah, elevated people, uh, actually the material reversals don't even trouble them. Okay, And then they utilize it as an opportunity to keep God in their remembrance always. So Kunti is a special case. She's one of the Panchakanyas, by the way, mentioned in our scriptures. So yeah, I know. Uh, he quotes that from Bhagavatam uh, periodically. All right, so now let's look at some of the framework around it. Uh, we'll get, we'll take your question again, Samji. What is the framework around uh, developing some of these skills? So, spiritual quotient, what does it entail? Right, if we have to master our mind or you know look at our desires and perspective and attachment, it all starts with your self mastery. The first part of it. Who's having these problems? Is this your body or your soul? Know thyself. Even Socrates has told that, right? Self-awareness is the building block or the very fundamental, um, uh, you know, stepping stone, so to say, that you would need to start building a spiritual quotient around it, right? They all can go hand in hand, but then typically this is how it goes. Then you need to have a universal awareness. You know, what is our uh, existence in context with the rest of the world? Like leaf is a part of the tree. We are interconnected with the rest of the universe. And the laws of the universe, spiritual laws, they are applicable to us. And when we say we are interconnected with the rest of the universe, if you are depressed or if you are sending hate signals, you are actually bringing down the peace content index of the world. You are actually contributing in a negative way. It's just like if you throw a wrapper, wrapper on the road, you are bringing down the cleanliness index of the world. So you are interconnected with everybody. Until it's just like if your body even if a small part is having a problem, your body will not be at peace. So unless everybody piece by piece is a, has realized peace in their head, no, not everybody would be. So we are interconnected with the world. That is the universal awareness we need to have. It's not like we are we exist in vacuum here. 
So our actions do carry a lot of weightage. That is why people who become spiritually evolved, they are conscious about other surroundings as well. Like environment as well, what we take from other people and all that stuff. And why it is important to give away. Because everything that we accumulate in this life become empty-handed, right? But whatever we end up gaining, whether it's wealth, whether it's our salary, it's because of so many other people who are enabling it. So that sense has to be there that, that uh, uh, you know, the how we are tied to the rest of the world as well. Third one is, of course, the self-mastery where you start managing your lower nature through higher nature. We are talking about, you know, how do you subdue your desires? It is important. Why it is important? You start understanding those concepts. Start practicing to subdue your lower nature. That becomes self-mastery. That will come. And then the next one is the professional mastery where you are not only helping, you are doing the bit that is needed for your own evolution, but then you start utilizing your skills for seva. And you nurture other people with compassion, knowledge and experience as well. You not only groom other people if you reach that stage, but also put your skills to best use for the service of others, not just for your own bhog bhogifying itself. So these are typically the four things that entail spiritual um, you know, you know, quotient. And we all need to get better at it um, with each passing day. That is expectation. And then when it happens, obviously we'll be able to relate with the spiritual concepts much more better and it will become a second nature to us. You know, we'll be able to grasp it much more comfortably. All right, with that, I will stop, take a pause and have the announcements. Uh, I think there are a few announcements. Like I said, the Saturday, 10 o'clock, 10 CST and 9.30 PM IST, we are going to have a very unique event. I would strongly encourage you, each one of you to show up on that, sign up for that, mention it in the attendance tracker if you want to say that, that way I'll have a rough count of that and encourage people to come as well because we have a unique opportunity to uh, you know, plan for a gift for our beloved Swamiji because of whom we are here and um, getting, you know, partaking the nectar of this divine knowledge every day. All right, I'll take a pause now for the announcements. Uh, then we can take a couple of questions and bring our uh, discussion segment to a closure before we transition into the devotional segment after 10 o'clock like we always do. All right, I'll take a pause now. Over to you, Mitavani. Yes, thank you. Um, so the first announcement is Swamiji's India tour. So right now he's in Chennai. Uh, Nitinji, before that, I just, I'm, I'm actually, I just want to share it. Day before yesterday, when my sister had gone to pick someone else from the airport, there, there she saw Swamiji. So by the time she wanted to go talk, but he, I mean, it was so kind of busy, she could not. But fortunately, my mom had gone to Chennai for a wedding and they both met Swamiji yesterday. So oh, it was like... <laughs> It was so exciting for me and I was like, I couldn't sleep. I was like, for us, it's midnight when they went. I was like keeping on messaging. Did you go? Did you go? And it was so wonderful that uh, she went and told, uh, my sister told, I'm so-and-so Amritwani's sister and Amritwani's mom. And Swami was like, you know, oh, you both resemble. He did mention that also, it seems. It very was nice. very nice. So I wanted to share it. Quite so. a coincidence, right? It happened. Yes. yes. <laughs> I thought only Amritwani ji stalks Swamiji. Now you told your mother and other people to start stalking him as well. <laughs> Good problem to have. No, very nice. It's 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 not a coincidence, but yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. I can see that excitement very palpable on your face. Yeah, I was super excited and I was like, I don't know, I have no words. <laughs> yeah, I can see you don't have any words. You are speechless today. Very nice, very nice, Amitavani ji. Thank you for sharing that with us. And, and I would love to share pictures of all the devotees who have met Swamiji, by the way, in Bombay and all. Please do share. We'd like to show that here. Samji had taken a picture. A lot of people had taken. So we'll probably flash it on a, one of our sessions. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I, go I, ahead. And, and sorry. sorry. <laughs> Actually, uh, Sudhirji, Dr. Sudhirji was also like, you know, he was like, uh, he, my sister, I mean, because it was completely new for my mom and sister. It's completely new. So I had. Uh, contacted uh, Sudhirji and he also helped them actually so that was also nice of him so he went and met Swamiji yeah <laughs> beautiful and see Amruta Vani is a live example of how these sessions have transformed so many lives mm -hmm. she started these you know with these sessions and there was a time she would uh, co-host more sessions than Kumar Shanu had sung songs in a day right he is in a Guinness World of Records 
she broke that record by co-hosting only i don't know how she managed it and um, uh, you know our sessions bhagavad gita session i owe it to you amrita vani ji because please, i'm please telling you 80 to 90% of the people would come to see amrita vani ji smile nobody cared about what i'm speaking but yeah. it at least kicked off our session and it continued and then amrita vani ji took a bit of a break but thank you so much for all that you have done amrita vani ji mm-hmm. and it did it's all nothing like that it's just your sessions i just uh, like kind of you know i'm playing my part here that's it <laughs> yeah but nitin ji today i'm planning to uh, sing a bhajan i think your uh, the attendance will go down so is it okay oh, no me? that is okay perfectly okay okay we are going to that is okay but you need to make the announcements first before we can transition to that sure. go ahead <laughs> yes uh, sorry about that i was very much excited sorry no 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 that's okay go ahead so yes we have this uh, india tour i've just posted the link and this is the Sha- sadhana shivar bhakti yog that is going to be that link has been posted uh, so the attendance tracker i'll post it again so please do uh, uh, put in your feedbacks questions and comments we just started today a uh, bhagavad gita recitation session it used to be on saturdays now it's in a new time so every thursday 7 pm cst it's friday 6:30 am ist so those are the thing and please do like nitin ji said please do join on saturday at 10 am cst so i believe it's the same bridge right nitin ji if i am i think the link would be shared mostly it's going to be on the same bridge yes but i like so, i said please please do and uh, i mean it will be a wonderful opportunity to do something special for our swami ji and let's get to know more about it during that session great yes. are we good with the announcements then yes i will just post the tracker meanwhile yeah all right then i think we come to a formal closure from a discussion stand for maybe sam ji has one question and then we transition over to our um devotional segment i can see few hands excitement said hands already here yes Go ahead, Sam. Uh, in the yes, example given, where God is testing that person by asking him to chop his son's head. Chop his son's head? Yeah, that is a brutal test for sure. Yeah, I felt like what is the sadism? Even though he is God, I mean, doesn't that actually those those kind of tests doesn't um, cause the distance between God and us? even in material world in the relation sometimes we test to know whether this is amji you are thinking of this thing from a very material mind of, and feeling very vulnerable about this test right when i gave the example of prahlad when his son was supposed to be sent to gallows he did not bat an eyelid those people they reach a level of consciousness where they understand the complete picture we are still thinking of ourselves as a body and very attached to things and relationships around us those people are situated at a very different level right today i mean swami ji in his lecture was saying uh, there was a husband and a wife they lost their son now the the wife was spiritually elevated so she could take that husband was not and the way she told him was when he came back she told him that you know what i had given a utensil to our neighbor and when i went to the neighbor to get it back she had borrowed it from me she started fighting with me so husband said what kind of a mindset is that you know she had borrowed it from you so when you went there to reclaim it back she has no moral right to complain about it or fight she said exactly you know god had given a son he has decided to take it back so they believe in this knowledge we hear this knowledge but we don't believe it because we are so deeply entrenched in this world Correct. we still want Mm-hmm. but in that example it is naturally i mean the son died naturally but here god asking god himself asking to chop off his son's head uh, so god if you believe in god it's like you he says sarv dharmam parityajye maam ekam sharanam braj it's like all right traffic policeman is saying go no no need to look at the red light that is the test of your faith in his in his uh, wisdom that he is my well wisher he is not somebody who is going to take me for a ride there are tons of such stories around it god has his ways of testing you so now you will put your own intellect hey god i trust you but this doesn't make sense to me because now what you are asking me to do is inhuman and that is not done i would do anything but this thing sarv dharma parityajye maam ekam sharanam braj means 
your word is the letter basically i have to go with whatever you say if you believe, mm. believe okay. so we cannot selectively pick up quotes which appeal to our intellect and reject the ones that don't okay that okay that means if the instruction came through a person also uh, the devotees will listen like in no, prahlad not necessary uh. not necessarily now that is where if it is a god realized saint sure that you have to exercise and understand not necessarily i mean any mm -hmm. person would come and say god is saying that how do i know that i mean you can't but say in prahlad's case then how did he exercise that who exercised that in prahlad in prahlad ji's case how did he exercise that because the instruction came through guru's Guru, son. son right so no. he said because i my stature from is from the point of view which one did he do that to, did he do that from scripture scriptural point of view i cannot meet prahlad so you simply have to understand the gist of the story right prahlad's okay. son and they went into a thing that whoever is defeated they have to be sent to the gallows they only had agreed upon that and as per that prahlad said okay send him to gallows he said no don't he said okay don't he was completely detached to the outcome right there was some raj dharma and all he must be following at that point what is the point you're trying to drive here i mean i'm still not getting mm. it no okay god i mean if god directly says we can listen um, because uh, finally i mean you said he is our well -well wisher uh -huh. yes sarvan dharman paritej we have to surrender but if if it, the same instructions comes through people because that's what happens in our real life then so, so in, in people if we, those are people who are key influencers then of course that is mm. probably yes that is you okay. have to tolerate or go with that right mm. or if you have an influence to change that sure try get it out your intuition will tell you is it something that you can exercise any control over or you have to let go right or you keep fighting if you think that is going to give you the result that you think sure go ahead beyond a point your intuition will tell you that it is time to let go of it right? okay. your, it is a prudence there is no it's not a science around it and everybody's situation is different they have to exercise their own prudence around it right there is no formula that you try for two days and then give up the third time i don't know maybe edison tried it 3999 times and for somebody it might be just nine times is enough for him that person to know that you know maybe that's not meant to happen i need to move on so it's very contextual and subjective around that okay. unless we are talking to god okay Yes, um, Manoranjan ji, Kabir ji, Joha, please go ahead. I think one Swami ji said, but we'd love to hear from you. And then we get into our devotional segment. Come to all of you. Am I audible? Yes, yes you are. Very much. Yeah. Mm, actually, the topic we discussed, uh, just a perspective from the Mahavarata point of view of B.R. Chopra. So when okay. if you see... Uh, the Bhagavad Gita of P.R. Chopra, the interaction between Lord Krishna and uh, Arjun. So, Bhagavan Krishna is saying that Sadharan Manushya Jo hai, wo nadiyon ke bhati hota hai. Wo apne kamana ho me bhekar, apna sara jo jal hai, wo samudra me uthal deta hai. Lekin samudra jo hota hai, wo muniyon ke bhati hota hai. Wo jal to krahan karta hai, lekin apne tatoon ki mariyada ki raksha karta hai. तो उसी भाव से मैं एक कबीर दोहा कहना चाहूंगा रिलेटेड टू समुद्र कबीर बोलते हैं कि कबीरा सीप समुद्र का खारा जल नहीं ले पानी पावे स्वाति का रह समुद्र माह कबीरा रह सो सो भा समुद्र माए Kabir Das is saying that uh, you have seen a creature known as sheep, from where actually we get the mukta, right? If you see, in, say, in spite of staying inside the samudra also, staying inside the sea also, it never consumes the salty water. Instead, it rises to the surface and take the, uh, the, the, the drops from the Swati Nakhitra, means when the Swati Nakhitra is at the sky, it takes the osh, the, the, the dew drops. And with that, it turns uh, the sand which is present inside its body to mukta. Right? Yes. So in spite of such difficulties staying inside the water, so this is the beauty of 
the sea which resides in the samudra so therefore yes. samudra is a muni and all other aspects in the samudra is also a muni thank you beautiful thank you so much maranjan ji beautiful insighting is this shloka talks about that only we are going to get more into detail tomorrow about this concept of rivers emptying into that ocean and then still the ocean is able to maintain its maryada right it does not overflow or anything of that sort and that is how muni has been like you rightly pointed out we'll talk more about it tomorrow but thank you for sharing your insights thank you all right so are we good to move to devotional segment then pile ji i see that after a while so welcome back pile ji always um, a pleasure to have you back manish Amita mani ji we will probably start you are the first one no no i can do it in the last let's give it to people it's okay okay all right so manish ji you had a question or you wanted to uh, recite yeah i had a question well um kind of kind of along what sam ji was saying i think you had shared an example in in one of the sessions about arjun and krishna bhagwan came to uh show arjun something and he was a devotee to test his devotee and the wife and the son and the yamraj was the lion or tiger or something i don't know if you recall that and he wanted to eat meat of the uh human flesh like so and so the devotee had to give up his son to the tiger or uh that was the test that he was being tested i don't know do you recall that you you shared that story in class in one of the sessions earlier i did that see i'm growing old yeah. so my memory is not so good anymore but let me check out which story in what context was that i can pull it out um okay yeah, thank you for bringing it, it it was yeah it was something it was just testing the devotee but arjun had some question and krishna showed took him and they took different forms of uh, muni or something and the yamraj took the form of a um lion or tiger okay. and he had to give up his son i'll try to recall it not for, not at this point so yeah it was a while ago so okay yeah must have been available for sure but yeah, i'll try to find that it was few one. months ago sure cool all right so let's move on to our devotional segment then uh, let's get started with dinesh you wanted to sing kadira de dinesh did you want to do you have any question or would you no no i i want to sing a bhajan or right, sure. let's start with dinesh ji then pail ji and then amrita mani ji so please go ahead dinesh ji kadira de if you can turn on your camera if you can okay thank you thank you dinesh ji please go ahead what are you going to sing today for us uh, well uh, it's uh, one of the bhajan i learned uh, from uh, swami chinwayanand mission that's what i am going to sing sita ram kaho radhe sham kaho okay please sita ram kaho राधे श्याम कहो सीता राम कहो राधे श्याम कहो सीता राम बिना बेड़ा पार नहीं सीता राम बिना बेड़ा पार नहीं रदे श्याम बिना उदार नहीं रदे श्याम बिना उदार नहीं सीता राम कहो रदे श्याम कहो सीता राम कहो रदे श्याम कहो सीता राम बिना कोई प्यार नहीं रदे श्याम बिना कोई अपना नहीं सीता राम कहो रदे श्याम कहो सीता राम कहो रदे श्याम कहो सीता राम बिना सुख 
कौन करे सीता राम बिना सुख कौन करे राधे श्याम बिना दुख कौन हरे राधे श्याम बिना दुख कौन हरे सीता राम कहो राधे श्याम कहो सीता राम कहो राधे श्याम कहो राधे राधे थैंक यू ब्यूटीफुल वेरी वेरी नाइस लव्ड इट आई थिंक इट इट इट्स द सेम ट्यून एज श्यामा आन मिलो राइट ब्यूटीफुल वेरी नाइस दिनेश जी थैंक यू सो मच फॉर सिंगिंग एंड लव्ड इट आई थिंक यू सिंग वेल यू शुड सिंग मोर ऑफन ब्यूटीफुल Hmm. All right, Pail ji. I know you wanted to go early, so yes, Pail ji, please go ahead. I will unmute you just a minute. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Nitin ji, today also I will try uh, one a uh, Gita. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Meera Bhajan. Sure, sure. <clears throat> पग गुंगरु बांध पग गुंगरु बांध पग गुंगरु बांध पग गुंगरु बांध मीरा ना चीरे ना चीरे मीरा ना चीरे ना चीरे मैं तो मेरे नारायण की आप ही हो गई दासी रे मैं तो मेरे नारायण की आप ही हो गई दासी रे मीरा के प्रभु गिरधर नागर मीरा के प्रभु गिरधर नागर जन्म जन्म की दासी रे पग गुंगरु बांध पग गुंगरु बांध पग गुंगरु बांध पग गुंगरु बांध मीरा ना चीरे ना चीरे मीरा ना चीरे ना चीरे very nice pal ji radhe radhe thank you very much there so have you been so many days we were missing your singing all this while i missed these sessions too nitin your ji. audio has gone for a toss yeah your audio is low if you can suddenly it's low yeah right now also is it okay if like you can little yeah better yeah yeah i was i caught up somewhere uh, nitin ji i was busy with certain things i no miss these sessions a lot because of my classes i told you other day also it's really clashing no worries, with no my pleasure time. to have you back and uh, thank you. it's always a pleasure to hear you sing meera bhajan in other ways so thank you so much for that thank you thank, thank you so much it. it was Love amazing you. very nice thank you and there ji Amrita Vani ji, you want to go next, or okay, you want to go it's last? It's okay. I'll give it. No, no, I'll give it to our. All right, can, Sandhya ji, please go ahead. Go ahead, Sandhya ji. Uh, let me unmute you. Everybody has to stay back to hear Amrita Vani ji. She's an amazing singer no, 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 and an no, amazing no, actor definitely. also. Other than being an, an amazing co-host. <laughs> Sandhya ji, please. Amrita ji, yeah, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. So, your mother sitting with you, Sandhya ji. She is my mother-in-law, uh, as mother I told you recently. Yeah, my father-in-law passed away. So Radhe, we brought him. Pleasure to have you on the session, Radhe Radhe. Yes, yes. yes. Please go ahead. Singing before mother-in-law. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Asma buhi thanga sai chandra shekara. Asma buhi thanga sai chandra shekara. 
ಪಾಲ ನೇತ್ರ ಶೂಲಧಾರಿ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಪಾಲ ನೇತ್ರ ಶೂಲಧಾರಿ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಭಸ್ಮ ಭೂಷಿತಾಂಗ ಸಾಯಿ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಭಸ್ಮ ಭೂಷಿತಾಂಗ ಸಾಯಿ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಸಾಮಗಾನ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸಾಮಗಾನ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಹರ 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 ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ನಟನ ಶೇಖರ ಹರ 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 ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ನಟನ ಶೇಖರ ಪತ್ತಿವಾಸ ಸಾಯಿ ದೇವ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಪತ್ತಿವಾಸ ಸಾಯಿ ದೇವ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಭಸ್ಮ ಭೂಷಿತಾಂಗ ಸಾಯಿ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಭಸ್ಮ ಭೂಷಿತಾಂಗ ಸಾಯಿ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಕಾಲ ನೇತ್ರ ಶೂಲಧಾರಿ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಕಾಲ ನೇತ್ರ ಶೂಲಧಾರಿ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಭಸ್ಮ ಭೂಷಿತಾಂಗ ಸಾಯಿ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಭಸ್ಮ ಭೂಷಿತಾಂಗ ಸಾಯಿ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಸಾಮಗಾನ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸಾಮಗಾನ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಹರ 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 ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ನಟನ ಶೇಖರ ಹರ 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 ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ನಟನ ಶೇಖರ ಪತ್ತಿವಾಸ ಸಾಯಿ ದೇವ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಪತ್ತಿವಾಸ ಸಾಯಿ ದೇವ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಾಯಿ ಶಂಕರ ಭಸ್ಮ ಭೂಷಿತಾಂಗ ಸಾಯಿ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಸಂಧ್ಯಾ ಜಿ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಿವ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಕುಡ್ ರಿಲೇಟ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ at least that part i could understand but very nicely, very nicely sir thank you thank I'm you sure your mother in law will be proud of you you know <laughs> i let her know <laughs> thank you so much nikhil ji very few people get an opportunity to make their mother in law dance to their tunes okay and your tune was spot on today very nicely done <laughs> thank you very much for that all right thank you manu ranjan ji are you going to sing as well yeah if you allow me two lines you are yes, extremely sir. allowed yeah thank you very much <clears throat> so one two lines from a very popular song which is song very often in india it is said badlo apni chaal naya yug aane wala hai naya yug aane wala hai hui disaaye lal अंधेरा जाने वाला है नया युग आने वाला है नया युग आने वाला है दसो दिशाए लाल हुई है लेकर के अंगड़ाई नव प्रभात की कुकड़ बोले जाग वे लह आई बदलो अपनी चाल अंधेरा जाने वाला है नया युग आने वाला है नया युग आने वाला है धन्यवाद धन्यवाद मनोरंजन जी वेरी नाइस यू मेंट द अदर युग आफ्टर कल युग और इन जनरल नो एक्चुअली जब जागे तब सवेरा जब आप जागे तो आपका युग बदल गया तो आप जागिए इन दैट सेंस ग्रेट वेरी नाइस थैंक यू वेरी मच ब्यूटीफुल ऑल राइट सो हिमानी हिमानी आर यू गोइंग टू सिंग एज वेल टुडे गो हेड हिमानी जी अमिता वानी जी यू हैव बीन बैक इन अदर स्पॉट टुडे और और यू कैन सिंग व्हिच एवर वन अमिता वानी जी योर कॉल अमिता वानी जी यू कैन गो हेड ऑल राइट अमिता वानी जी गो हेड एंड देन हिमानी कैन सिंग आफ्टर दैट Yes, it would be better for me also, so that you can end with a beautiful singer rather than me. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. You go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'll. It's three lines, so <laughs> I hear you. I hear it's you. one of my favorites, so <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. So, Baja Shri Krishna, Baja Shri Krishna, Shri Krishna, Baja. Shri Krishna 
भज श्री राधा भज श्री राधा श्री राधा भज श्री राधा भज गोविंद भज गोविंद Sorry. <laughs> your your volume went off uh, in between. I'm but you, but you did I'm well. Sorry. You should sing more. I can see. It. Have you started singing bhajan at the temple? Uh, no, no, no. I'm just. <laughs> I like. I've been listening, but then I just wanted to. So since you started nice. this segment, so I wanted to. <laughs> so that was very nice. You should actually um, uh, sign up for our uh, anniversary celebration and sing bhajan. Okay, we, I look forward to that. You you have that potential. You are like that Neo of Matrix. You are capable of much more than you give yourself credit for. So very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Amrita Vani ji. All yeah, right, yes, Amrita Vani ji gets the best debut award today, <laughs> and a heart as well. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, everyone. All right, now we get to our opera turned. Bhajan singer Himani. Yeah, so I have a little bit of cough going on, but I couldn't resist singing this Nam Kit no Sankit. Worries. So we can deal with your cough, okay? No worries. Uh, yeah, I bought some hot water because I really wanted to sing sure, this. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Okay. Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari, Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari, Hari. Hari Rama, 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 Hari, Hari, Hari Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari, Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari, Hari. Thank God I didn't cough. No, very nice, uh, him, uh, uh, Himani. When you go to the high pitch, right, your audio was trailing off. You may want to fix that. With okay. The beautiful uh -huh. So when you go to the high pitch, it was trailing off. Was it just me? I think there was, right? It was trailing yeah, off. Yeah, it was there. Yes, yes. It was yes. getting disconnected. Something is yes. going on with the audio today. Amrita oh. when you went to high pitch, your volume also went away. <laughs> oh, okay. Something is, Something similar to what Amrita Vani ji, that voice was getting completely faded. But oh. <laughs> so we'll get an opportunity to complete that. But very nicely done, Himani. And this uh, Krishna Mahamantra is some, you know, Maharaji used to say that when you start progressing spiritually, your affection or affinity towards this Mahamantra will start increasing because it's a very, very powerful, you know, especially when you're remembering God along with it and very beautifully sung. Great. With that, uh, become... there is a request that just came in that uh, if like Zoom cuts high pitch is what I'm hearing. Yeah. So, uh, so those of you who have sang, sang like that, Amruta Vani ji, Himani ji and everyone else, uh, please consider sending us the recording. It will be big. It will be good. Because your high pitch is what puts in the X factor and Zoom, I think it's, it's not cooperating today. So. <laughs> Maybe Zoom cuts the high pitch for some reason. I don't know. Always it does that? Or is it like just today? 
I mean, okay. someone said that it's a technical thing. So Zoom cuts high notes is what they are saying. So yeah. That means you are really singing at a very high note, which is commendable. Okay. Good. Um, but yeah, I'd thank you for another enthralling and crossing session and for your enthusiastic participation. And using microphone might solve this issue. Yes, Anita ji has Anita ji has solved this problem by using microphone. So Zoom likes microphone, but Zoom does not <laughs> like when you go in high pitch without a microphone. I think that's probably <laughs> okay. Great. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We will go much more deeper into this topic again tomorrow because the shloka we really did not go into the theory. We touched upon the desire aspect of it. So we'll go deeper into that tomorrow. So thank you again. A very happy rest of your evening and a great rest of your day ahead. Jagruchi, you wanted to say something? Go ahead, please. Jag Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Nitinji, I was just looking, Googling up. So in looks like in Zoom, right? In preferences, audio, there is a audio profile and there is a setting called original sound for musicians. So looks like if we do that, that okay. may solve this problem. Original sound for musicians. So, Amrita Manuji, <laughs> next time you want to sing in high pitch, please have that setting on. But regardless, let's put that as a default setting so that our, you know, the pitch and the bar is being raised in our sessions. So, Zoom better cope up with it, okay? Because we are not going to stop. So, please check out that setting. Jagruti, you may want to let Amrita Manuji know and, and she will fix it for us once and for all. Uh, thank you, Jagadji, for letting huge, everyone know. That was really seva. nice of you. It will be a huge seva okay, <laughs> for everybody's throat. Shamji, yes, Shamji, you wanted to go ahead, please. Yeah, Radhe, Radhe. I just wanted to thank Nitin Bhai and Amrita Maniji because of Nitin, Nitin Bhai, I am here for the sessions for the last two years. And because of Amrita Maniji's smile and her giving me this, this opportunity to, to host these sessions, I am here. Because otherwise, <laughs> I would not have taken this opportunity to co-host and host. This is because of you people only. I am here today and hosting and co-hosting and I'm regularly attending these two sessions for the last couple of years. And I thank you, thank you and thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Today, Amuta Vani Ji's smile and your, your scolds both are equally loved by everybody. Okay. Can I say a few lines? Sure, sure. Go ahead. And I'll it's only because of you, Shambhai, so many people out of your fear they have started turning on their videos. Okay, so thank you for that. I am grateful to all those people, enthusiasts who are turning the cameras on because I told Nitin Bhai once that one time we try to turn Nitin Bhai's camera off and we will listen to how do we feel that without the shackle, how do we feel? So, I am listening to the song of Pabna Vati. How it will feel, okay? Very yeah. nice. So, so, I would want you to do one session, one full hour like this, one day for all of us. So I want to dedicate this song to Krishna. एक ईमान है दोनों तुझ पे हाँ तुझ पे दोनों तुझ पे कुर्बान है राधे राधे beautiful शामजी very nice did you compose it all by yourself <laughs> it's there it's a movie called पद्मा वत पद्मा वती so somehow I was going through reels yesterday so this reel was there with Krishna's photo there so I am hooked to the song since yesterday. So okay. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And wish you a very, very nice day ahead and a great rest of your evening, whatever is left of your evening. And I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow to complete this shloka. Thank you again. Good night, Radhe Radhe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Radhe Radhe.